let's play a little bit of a game before we begin our lesson. Now this is matching, okay? So you match the pictures with the words. Now, we will also try to listen to the words. First one, what is that? Blend. Blend. So, blend. Where should I put blend? Where should I put blend? Uh, and so you can take off your bag. <laughs> we are not going to run away from here, so you can take off your bag. <laughs> okay? Where is blend? What do you think? Where is blend? Is it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? There are 10 pictures. Number 2? This one? Let's see. Okay, we will check later. Okay? Now, how about this one? What is this? Curved. Curved. Okay. Now, where should I put curved? There. Five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. This one. Okay. How about this one? What is this? Distorted. This, 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 distorted. Distorted. Where should I put distorted? Okay. That is four. Four. I can say it's four. Okay. Let's see. What about this one? What is this? Expressive. 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 Good. Where should I put expressive? Three. Three? Three or ten. Three or the final one. Or ten. Which one? Three or ten. Which one? I think one. Uh, and then ten. 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 Foreground. Yeah. Foreground. Where shall I put foreground? Where shall I put foreground? What do you think? Six. Six? Okay, let's say six. Okay, and then this one is? Impact. 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 Where should I put impact? Oh no, my internet connection is unstable. No. Where should I put impact? Oh, so that's wrong. Wait a minute. That's not connected to me. What do you mean by that? Connection problem, internet connection is not going to connect. Why is it isn't connect? Okay, now it's connected. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. Something happened. My internet connection is not good. Okay, it wasn't good. Now let's continue again. Impact should be number six. Impact should be number. Which one is it, Nathan? Sorry. Blend should be number six and foreground should be number two. Okay, wait, let me. That means I should put blend. Let me put it there first. And then blend is number six. Okay, how about. Impact. impact? How about impact? Where should I put it? Where should I put the impact? Hmm? Number? One. Let's say number one impact. Okay. How about this one? Moral. Moral. Where should I put the moral? Number one is moral. Okay. Let me put the impact over here. Number one is moral. Then where is impact? Wait, let me check. Then where is impact? Number one is moral. Where is impact? What do you think? Okay, let's just put impact some other time, okay? Now, how about this one? Skull. Seven, okay, let's put impact over here, skull over here. And then this one? Symbolize. Symbolize. Where should I put it? Number eight. This one, okay. Yes. Let me put it there, I put it here, and then I put it here. 
about texture? texture? Where should I Mine. Mine. Number nine. Mine. So impact is this one. Okay. Now let's try. Let's try to see. Okay. Let's try to check. We will see. And the result is yes. Well done. Great job. Okay. Any words that you don't understand from here? Is there any word that you don't understand? Uh, and I understand. Yeah, okay, there you understand all of them. How about everyone in here? Impact. impact. So, impact. If we can see over here, what are they doing actually? Can you clearly see? Uh, I think that they watch a horror. So, they're watching a horror movie and they got scared. That is the impact. The results of something being happened to you. So, impact can also be when maybe you get a car crash or maybe Nicola stand up and then someone runs over to Nicholas and then that someone is falling down because Nicholas is so big that's also an impact to that person okay so that is impact okay now what we're going to do today is we're going to read stories so please take out your book okay Take out your book. We're going to do what we're going to do is we're going to practice about annotation. Okay, take out your book, which is on page 53. On page 53. Okay, open page 53. Okay. Put it here. Now I'm gonna zoom it in a little bit. We are not going to read all of them because we have 53 and 54. We are not going to read all of them, but we will read some of them. For example, the first one about telling a story. Who wants to read the first one for us? May I read? Okay, go ahead, Nathan. Telling a story. Narrative paintings tell stories. They might be from history, myths, or legends. Knowing the story can help you understand the painting. This painting by Peter Hugel, the elder, uses the myth of the fall of Icarus. Icarus and his father make wings out of wax so they can escape from the island of Crete. His father warns Icarus not to fly too close to the sun, but Icarus doesn't listen. The sun melts his wings and Icarus falls into the sea and drowns. The moral of the story is that you will be punished if you are too proud or ambitious. Icarus falls, but Google painting also suggests that other people don't care or pay attention. The main focus of the pa painting is the landscape, not Icarus's fall. In the foreground, a man and his horse are working on his farm. Behind them, a shepherd is looking away from the sea. Icarus himself is only shown by a small pair of legs in the sea. He is tiny and unimportant, and his fall has no impact on the other people in the painting. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, sorry, I haven't. Okay, thank you very much, Nathan. Uh, let me check something. Okay, Nathan, thank you very much for the reading. Now, it's kind of weird that the title itself is telling a story because we're talking about paintings. Now, paintings or pictures can give you some kind of, if we look into the top of it, it can tell stories, it can also show everyday life, 
It can also express emotion and lots of things. Now, what kind of painting, if we want to see over there from the text, okay, what kinds of painting do we refer to as a narrative painting? What do you think? A narrative painting is telling what? From the text itself. So every question. Stories. Stories. Good, Dario. No. Uh, is it Dario or Nathan? Is it Nathan? Oh, that's Nathan. Sorry. So. Sorry. <laughs> so it's already in here. Narrative paintings tell stories. Okay. We studied be before about annotation. Annotation means that you underline things that is important about the who, the what, the where, the when, the how, and the why. So, this is about what, what kind of painting. So, narrative story, narrative painting tells stories. Now, if we look closer to the painting itself, okay, if we look closer to the painting itself, I'm going to clear that one a little bit. If you don't know about the title of the painting, what do you think about it? What maybe is the story? If you don't know about the title of the painting. It's a landscape painting. It's a landscape painting. It could be a landscape painting. Good, Nathan. But how about if it's a, a story painting? A narrative painting? What do you think? If it's a narrative painting? It's the story of Icarus who had wings and flew too high to the sun. The okay. sun melted the wax off his wings and he fell into the sea. Okay, but yes. Didn't, but his fall didn't have any impact on the people around him continuing their daily lives. Okay, good. Thank you, Nathan. But what if you don't know about Icarus? What if you don't know about what this painting is about? What do you think? The daily life of the shepherd and the man with his bull. Okay. While, it runs, mm -hmm. while there is a person drowning on the bottom right hand corner. Okay, good. Thank you. So it could be just a daily life of the person or the people in that place. So like you said, Nicholas, it's about the daily life, it's about everyday life, about how they work. If we don't know about the story of Icarus, if we don't know the title of the painting itself. So, painting's interpretation, is it something that is subjective or objective? What do you think? Do you know the meaning of subjective and objective? Subjective. Okay, Nathan said subjective. Let me ask for everyone else. What is the meaning of subjective? What is the meaning of subjective? What do you think? It depends on the angle you look at the painting at. Okay, it depends if you're looking on at the shepherd and his cow, you could mm -hmm. be looking at the shepherd. Uh, you could be looking at a shepherd and his sheep, or you could be looking at the man and his cow, or you could also be looking at Icarus's feet and his one arm, mm -hmm. and then find the story is out. Okay, good. So it's about, you could say about point of view. If it's subjective, whose point of view is it? If it's subjective, whose point of view is it? Now let me ask. It's the reader's choice. The reader's choice. Okay, thank you, Nathan. So it's the reader. Okay? So, subjective, as we know, every time I told you about grammars, we talk about the subject plus verb one, etc. This subject 
is the person. When we talk about subjective, that means it depends on you. It depends on every one of you, how you interpret something. So, like a story, a story sometimes objective, sometimes subjective. Like the painting too. Painting sometimes subjective, sometimes subjective. Okay, now let's move on about the story itself that we already read, okay? What happened to Icarus in the story? Icarus fell down. Why? Because he flew too high. Because he go too high to where? To the sun. To the sun. That's right. Okay. But let me ask you, have you ever heard about the story of Icarus? Yes. Okay, yes. Don't say yes. They haven't said yes. How about everyone else in the Zoom? Okay, so only two of you know about the story of Icarus, about Nicholas and Nathan. Okay, so the story is like this. So this is Greek mythology about a young man with his father trying to fly. Okay? They make wings from the wax. You know what is the wax? Yes. Okay? So, what happens if wax getting too hot? It will melt. Now, because it corresponds too high, he is so happy that he can fly, he can get away from the... I kind of forgot. Poseidon, is it? Prison. Uh, from the prison, yes. Because he can get away from the prison with his father. He fly too high. His father already warned him, do not go too near to the sun. The wings will melt it. But he didn't listen. So that's why the wind melted, Icarus fell, and died. And that is the moral of the story, like from the text, the moral, what is the moral of the story again? From the text? Yes, if you are too proud, you will be punished. But what do you think is the punishment, usually? Because in real life, there is no way that if you are too proud, you will fall down and you die. There is no way that happens. So, in real life, if you are too proud, what do you think? What will happen? Getting injured severely. Getting injured severely. That is Nicholas. How about everyone else? For example, okay, for example, you have something new. Let's just say, for example, that either Nicholas or Jeremy, uh, sorry, either Enzo or Jeremy has the newest iPhone. What is the newest iPhone right now? I, I kind of forgot. Hmm? What is iPhone 12, is it? iPhone 12 or iPhone 13? I kind of forgot. So let's say, for example, that Enzo and Jeremy has the newest iPhone and I'm sorry that I'm using you Enzo <laughs> okay I'm mean, sorry that I'm using you and Enzo is boasting to everyone look I have a new iPhone I have the newest one you don't have it at all what will happen to Enzo if you do that will he have friends his iPhone will be stolen or his iPhone will break yeah, the phone could be stolen or it could be break because maybe someone really hate what Enzo already said and then he will break the phone. It could be happen. I will kill you. No, there is no killing over here, Jeffrey. <laughs> okay, so that is the moral that if you are too proud, too ambitious or being boastful, do you know the meaning of boast? Yes. B O A T. Boast. So boast. Uh, maybe I don't. Maybe so for those who is in the Zoom, don't know. B O A S T. Boast. Okay. So boast. Uh, let me make it bigger. There we go. Boast. So boast is in Bahasa is pamer boastful in bahasa means pamer 
It's one trait of when someone is too prideful. In bahasa terlalu sombong. Okay. So that is about the moral of the story from the painting of Icarus. Now let me ask the painter Peter Bruegel paint about this one. How did he know? Why what do you mean? Uh, I mean sorry. <laughs> How or why did he paint that? Let's try to think a little bit. Why did he paint that? Why not? Maybe because one of his friends was posting to him. Uh, could be. It could be one of his friends. And his members was very proud. Yeah, it could be like that too. And just now who said why not? <laughs> Geoffrey is it? <laughs> okay. So if we look again, if we look again into the painting. I'm sorry that we are going to a lot in this painting because it has lots of moral stories over there. If you look again in the painting, can you see Icarus? Yes. Where? At the sea, next to the dock or something. At the sea, next to the dock or something. Which is right here. Okay, you can see the leg over there, which is right there. You can see his one leg over there. What does Peter Bruegel wants to share from whose point of view? Because the story is about Icarus flying too high and then he fell down and he died. But the point of view, because it's subjective from Peter Bruegel, what do you think? What kind of meaning that Peter Bruegel wants to share? It could be that the man and the cow do not pay attention to their surroundings. Instead, they continue working. So it is to be hardworking. Yes. Thank you, Nathan. So, Peter Bruegel, not focusing on the ignorance, he's telling us that if you are too prideful, if you are boastful about yourself, no one will pay attention to you at all. That is the meaning of this picture. Okay? And that's why it's telling us a story about it. Okay. So now let's move on. This is also the new, the one of the famous painting about the scream. It's really famous. Now, who wants to read this one for us? Me. Nicholas, go ahead, Nicholas. Expressing emotion. Other paintings express emotion. The painter Edward Munch had an unhappy life, but he wanted to show human suffering in his paintings. As in the scream, the figure in the foreground is holding its head. With its mouth open in a silent scream, my shoes hurt and distorted tips to increase the emotion of the painting. The curved shape of the figure blends into the line of the landscape up to the red sky. The scream becomes a scream of the world. Much diary despite his inspiration for the painting, and walking on. With two friends, then the sun went down, trying to be fun to flood, and got a great scream in nature. Okay, thank you, Nicholas, for reading that. So, painting also can express emotion. Now, what do you see in here without looking at the title? What do you see in there? Someone screaming. Why? Let's try. Why? Why does he scream? Someone screaming. Why? Um, that question is really subjective because we do not know what he is screaming at. 
Yes, it's really subjective because we don't know what he's screaming at. Could be he's screaming because of his tired of the life. Could be also because the blood red sky. Yes, the blood red sky because he's afraid. So the screaming part it could be because of their fear, or or also because they got really really not really bored. Okay, tired of this life. It can be these two. Now, who is the painter of the screen? Edward Munch. Edward Munch. Okay. Now, what is the connection between the artist's life and the emotion expressed in his painting? What is the connection? So this, we know the reason why he drew this painting. Does Edward Munch has a happy life? No. No. So why he drew the screen? Because he was screaming in nature or something. Because he was he wants to scream at nature or something. Okay, thank you. Any other answer for this? Um, it's not only a form of art, but it can also be used to tell others a moral or how they are feeling, how the painters are feeling. Okay, it also shows or the painters' feelings. But what kind of feeling that he has? An unhappy feeling, okay. suffering, pain. Suffering, that's good. So, it is actually in the text too. He wanted to show human suffering in his paintings. That's why he painted them. The connection between the painter and the emotion expressed in the painting. Okay. And then, what does his diary talk about? He was probably hallucinating uh, of the moment the sun went down and the sky suddenly turned to uh, black. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily black, maybe it's something red. Mm -hmm. and, I, and he felt a great scream in nature. Yes, that's right. We see that at the end of the text. He talked about it in the diary. He described his own inspiration. But let me ask you, have you ever seen a sky so red that it's like blood? Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> but how red can you see the sky? Something mildly, mildly red but mostly orange. Sometimes mildly red but mostly orange. Have you ever seen that when there's a forest fire, the sky turns red? No. No. Okay. This is something. Maybe it's mm -hmm. just the evening. Maybe. That was sunset. Yes, the evening, the sunset. Okay. Now, I want to show you if. I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm going to put this one down. Forest fire fire. Ah, come on. Forest fire sky. Okay, I'm gonna show you this one from the zoom too. Uh, here, share. Have you ever seen it like this? A sky this round? Never. This is happened when we had a forest fire. I forgot this is maybe around Sumatra, North Sumatra. They had a forest fire back then. Back then, I forgot what year is it. This is how it is. Okay, I will tell you in Bahasa Indonesia a little bit. Okay, ini kejadiannya waktu ada kebakaran hutan di Sumatera. Langitnya merah. Uh, 
Can you say my Dario? Hey, oh. Oh, you I mean, want something. Okay, go ahead, Dario. What is it? Itu kok ada kayak dua orang itu siapa tuh? No, that is only statue. Oh. Those are only statues. So this happened, and maybe what Edward Munch see is like this. So red that he thinks it's like blood. Could be. Okay. Now let's move back. Okay. So that is about the paintings. Now, let me ask you before we move on. Let me ask you, do you find reading boring? Not really. Not really for Ashley, how about everyone else? I want honest opinion. Do you find reading is boring? It depends on the story. Depends on the story for Nathan, okay. How about everyone else? I need honest opinion. Uh, I don't know the meaning, what do you ask? Dario is kind of boring, he said. Okay, how about everyone else? I mean, maybe it depends on the story. Depends on the story, yes, could be. How about everyone else? Sometimes boring, sometimes not for Pio. Okay. How about Jeremy? What do you think? Hmm? Boring. Okay, Enzo, what do you think? Be Depends on the story. How about you, Amadeo? Boring. Okay. So most of us find that reading is boring. Do you know why? Let's let's try to discuss this a little bit. Do you know why reading is sometimes boring? Because there's only words. Okay. As we say, because there's only words. What else? Because Without any imaginary pictures mm -hmm. or paintings, you will not feel it is very interesting. Yes, because there is no imaginary pictures or drawing or painting, it will become boring. Because I'm too lazy to read it. Because Jeffrey is too lazy to read it. Thank you for your honesty, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> okay, what else? Why do we feel bored when we read? It depends. It depends a lot of pages. It depends how deep they describe the scene. Okay, Nicola said depends on the pages. Nathan said this depends on their describe the scenes. What else? Have you ever read in our kitab uh, no picture in there? Okay, the Bible doesn't have any pictures in there. Yes, that's true. Have you ever read a novel before? No. No. Yes. What do you think, Pio? How do you find it? When you read the novel, what do you feel? Do you like it or not? Sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't. It depends on the story itself. The reason why we hate reading because there's nothing moving. When you read comic books, okay, when you read comic books, let me ask Jeremy, do you read mangas? I mean the Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. Do you read it or do you watch it? Read. Do you find it interesting? No. You prefer to watch the anime. Okay. So, our eyes, our brain, likes something that is moving, something that is immediate action. That's why we love action movies. Now let me ask you, who doesn't like action movies in here? No one. Everyone loves action movies. Let me ask you, what is your favorite movies? I don't know. Sherlock Holmes. Okay, Nathan, Sherlock Holmes. Ashley, what was it? Movie. What is your favorite movie? We're trying to we are trying to compare between movie and book. Okay. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter for Dario. Okay. I love it. I love it. Anything else? Avengers. Avengers. Endgame is it or is it the? Infinity. Infinity Wars. Okay. 
Mm. Okay, Jeffrey also the same with Nicholas, Avengers. Now let me ask you. When they made that movie, those movie that you mentioned, do you think there's a book of art or not? Yes. 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 Why, for Dario, why you think that Harry Potter's movie is better than the novel? Uh, because I like yeah, it's like it. Because of what you see. You like what you see. While when you're reading, you don't see anything. Just imagine. You have to imagine. That's the key. Uh, I like anything related to magic. Okay. You like uh, anything related to magic. Okay. Magic and detective. So I love Conan. Okay. But I, I never wrote it. But have you ever read Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Sir Arthur Conan Doyle? I like Squid Game. <laughs> wow! The new was one. Okay, Squid Game. I think almost everyone likes Squid Game. I like, I haven't watched it yet, so I don't really know what is it. Maybe I will try to watch it sometimes. But yeah. Dario and for Dario and Nathan, you said you like Sherlock Holmes. You said you like detective. Have you ever read the book itself? Um, yes. Okay. Good. So sometimes why we read because we can imagine things better than just watching. I love what thing I love what the movie I don't like to read the Okay, here's one fact, okay? Let's say here is one fact from reading. There is one phrase, okay, I will take Harry Potter. Okay, there is one phrase in Harry Potter in the Goblet of Fire. Where Dumbledore says, where they say, ask Harry calmly. There is the word, there is the sentence over there that said, Dumbledore asked Harry calmly. What do you think when you see the, someone asking calmly? How do you ask someone calmly? Let me see, let me ask you. How do you ask someone calmly? Well, in the meantime, I want to show you something. Okay. What do you think? How do you ask someone calmly? Let me ask you. How do you ask someone calmly? Hmm? Ask someone calmly. Like that. Probably. Like that, probably. Okay. When you ask someone calmly, maybe you will say, Hey, are you okay? Is it true? Okay. Sure. But we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen. This is the difference, okay? The difference between book and movie. This will help you to understand. Okay. This will help you to understand a little bit. Okay, maybe I'm gonna lower down the voice. Ah, uh, it's loading in here. It's loading in my part. It's loading. What? Yeah, it's loading. I know. It's lagging. Okay, okay, it's still loading. I, I think I think I got I think I got the wrong. I think I got the wrong. So boring. <laughs> <laughs> I know. One bit, one bit. While loading, I would like to read a famous quote. Okay, go ahead. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to our enemies, but just as much to stand up to our friends. Okay, maybe this one will help. Okay, I want to make sure that you know the importance of reading rather than just watching the movies. Why is so great when Please wait, okay. 
Did you put your name into the Goblet of Fire? Harry? Dumbledore asked calmly. Harry! I brought that! Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Is that how you ask someone calmly? No. <laughs> let, me, let me make it so that you can see it again, okay? I'm gonna replay it again. Did you put your name into the Goblet of Fire? Harry? Dumbledore asked calmly. Harry! I brought that! Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so it's time. that's not calmly at all, okay? So sometimes the, inter the movie interpretation is not the same from the book. It, is, it will be more interesting when you read the book by imagining it. Now, how can you apply this into your textbook? Into everything that you oh, start so like, hey, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like what, Jeff? Like what, Jeff? Jeff what is calmly? Calmly. Calmly means that you're trying Calm. to... No, that's different. Okay? In Bahasa, calm means tenang. Okay, so when you ask someone calmly, that means, okay, you're going to ask with a good emotion, not getting angry. And that's the difference, okay? That's the difference between book and movies. Movies being created to make you getting entertained. While books is written to make you imagine things. That's why you prefer movies. Because you just see it. You don't have to process it. Now reading, you need to process it. That's why you get bored. Because you need to process it into your brain. Especially when you have to memorize them. Okay? I know. I studied a lot. I hate to memorize. I don't have a good memorization. But to help you getting better for reading, try to imagine. For example, we are talking about paintings that are expressing emotion. Try to think or try to imagine about your own painting expressing emotion. What will it be? Let me ask one by one. Amadeo, what, <laughs> what kind of emotion that you could possibly draw right now? What? What kind of emotion that you could possibly draw right now? You don't know. Maybe you will just say, meh, that kind of emotion. Okay, thank you. How about you, Jeff? He said, don't know. That means his emotion is just like this. Okay, thank you. Enzo, how about you? What kind of emotion? Lazy. Lazy. That means you will draw yourself in a? In the bed. Because you want to sleep. Okay. Ashley, how about you? What kind of emotion that you want to draw? Happy, okay. That means you could draw maybe something like screaming, but with also balloons. We're making it fun. We're making it better so that we can know better. How about you, Nicholas? What kind of Greatly emotion? Greatly angry. Great. So what kind of emotion that maybe you want to draw? What will it be like? Waiting. You, you said you're great, but you're lazy? <laughs> Wait, which one is it? So, what kind of emotion will it be? When you feel great, it means... So, uh, sort of combined of lazy and angry. Oh, lazy and angry, sorry. Lazy and angry. Maybe that means you will draw when you wake up from your bed and you just go up like this. Because you're angry. How about you feel? What kind of emotion that you will draw? What? Scared. Because of what? Because of? Because of the horror game? Okay, you could use that. That means maybe you in front of the computer screaming like this while watching a horror game. <laughs> okay. So there are lots of things that we can do when we are reading. It doesn't have 
to be you just read just like that. If you just read and don't know the meaning at all, it will get boring. And if you're bored, you will go to sleep. Because you feel bored, you feel tired. The reason why you can go to sleep when the lesson is boring, because your brain finds it nothing to study here, nothing to do. It gets bored and fall asleep. So I want to help you to be able to get better in reading. Now, here's the first thing that you could do when you are reading. Let me ask, when you read, how do you read? Let me ask first, how do you read when you read it, when you read something? Read quickly so that it's done and I want to sleep. Okay, how do you read quickly, Nicholas? For example, this is a book. Okay, how do you read it? Do you read it from left to right? Yes. Do you move your head like this? Yes. Do you find it boring? Yes. Do you find it make you sleepy? Do you want to know how to read faster but without getting bored? Yes. You don't want? <laughs> so here is the thing. When you have a text, do not move your head. Read from the middle. Yes. So let your eyes straight in the middle. Okay? Do not follow the text. Do not go left to right. But try to up and down. That way, you will read faster. And you can also understand the meaning of it. It needs practice, but it can help you. So, for example, okay? I want to show you, for example, a little bit. We still have five more minutes. Okay? Now, this one. About hidden clues. Okay? On page 54. I will show you how to do it, okay? So you don't have to read one word per words. You don't need to read per words. But just look into the middle. And then up and down. And then. You could know what is the meaning. Or what is the text is about. I know that the title of the text is about hidden clues. Right? But what is the hidden clue? What does it include it in there? There is a skull over there. So when you read the text, if you want to use your finger to help you to read, try to stay, let it stay in the middle. Okay? So sometimes when we use our finger, we read it like this, right? Left, right, left, right. If you want to use your finger, put it stay in the middle and going down. Okay? If you want to help with your finger. So, the artist is Hans Holbein, from, and the title of this is The Ambassador. And also, it is about giving clues in the character of the two people there. It's John de Vintil, and also from his friend, George de Zavel. De Zell. Okay. So, we have lots of in instruments over there. And what we see is that we can also see a skull. Reminder of the death. So, it pays attention to the skull for the painting. Okay? So, without you need it to read little by little, by reading the way that I told you, you can get clues faster, you can get the meaning faster. That is the way you read and let me tell you again, if our daily text have reading, do not read the text first. Read the questions first. Good. But sometimes, most of us read the text first and then the question. That is the other way around. You need to know what is being asked and you need to find the answer. 
that way you will save time and also you will find it faster because you know oh i need to find the what in the text oh i need Mister. to find the who in the text yes what is i it? always I use that but why most of the teachers say read the text first that the problem is for that because it's the old ways we're not going to do that okay so you have to read the questions first and then read the text now let me let's use this example I, for this text. I read the, the question first because i'm too lazy to read it and by the way that is the good example because you're lazy you're trying to find a new way to get it faster and that shows that you're smart for that. That's you. Yes. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, ini yang suka baca soalnya dulu baru bacaannya si Inggris doang atau sebenarnya? If you want to use it, you can use it to everything else. Ya udah nanti mana kena marah. Alat dari dulu itu kayak baca dulu, baca dulu kayak Jeffrey yang ngomong ini kita dulu. The key, the, key, oh, the, key, the, key, the key is read the question first. Let's say this one for example, okay? Let's say I give you a question about the hidden clues and then you will find it. What's the purpose of the various objects in the painting? Try to find it in the text. What is the purpose of the various objects in the painting? That means you have the keywords, purpose and objects. Painting. Sir, I don't know what do you mean. What's the purpose of the various objects in the painting? In Bahasa, tujuannya apa? Okay, try to find it in the text. I'm very upset. That is for the skull. Good. Anything else? No. There is one? The two blokes mean that they like to travel. The math and science instruments show the knowledge of math and science. Mm -hmm. uh, the musical instruments and the books um, show a love of music and learning. Okay, good. So there are several things. The purpose. There are like musical instruments, books, also like the luxurious carpet, and also about the skull. So with me asking the question first, you know what you have to find. Is it faster that way or is it faster that you read it first and then you ask, you read the question? You faster to read the question first. So this is the key to make you understand more when you read something. So other than I told you that you read just stay in the middle, Try when you read something or when you study about something, try to answer six questions. The what, the when, the where, who, why, and how. If you can find it, it will make you getting better in studying and also it makes reading more fun. Okay? You understand? Okay, so I think that's it for our class today. The screen sharing. And then I will see you on next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.